Good morning again. That's my name. What do you want to talk about, mathematics or love? Love you. <laughs> um, we'll talk about both, actually. Um, I'm really glad to see so many people in the morning, actually. Um, yesterday we had a, some discussion with a few of my friends here at the conference about um, how to create a good software. And some of them told me that you just get a good a few good programmers, they put them together and they will do what they need to do. So it's really important to make sure that programmers are good. So in the next 45 minutes, we'll try to find out who are these good programmers and what can we do to, to be good programmers. And I will give you my opinion. And my opinion may be a little bit different from other opinions, so be prepared for an opinionated talk. Um, other by the way, any good programmers in this room? Just a few. Are there any bad programmers in this room? Way more. <laughs> there you go. So the rest, the rest of the room is like medium, mediocre programmers. Am I right? I, I like how you laugh because I also laugh when somebody asks me what I mean when, when I hear that there are good programmers and bad programmers. I don't really understand the difference. So we'll find out what it is. When I was a student many years ago, 25 years ago, uh, I thought that a good programmer looks like that. You probably know that guy, right? Who doesn't know who is this guy? Oh, that's awesome. So there are some bad programmers here. Um, <laughs> so I thought that good programmers look like that and um, and they are very scientific, they are very smart, they are very intellectual, they resolve some complex problems, they have big brains and they, are, they have PhDs and all like that. So I looked at these people, you know, and I wanted to be like that. Um, today, when I see programmers, I feel that they look more like that. Who doesn't know this guy? Okay, well, Nikola, you're just trolling me, you don't know... The left and the right, none of them? Okay. Um, so now they, they look more like that, modern programmers, good programmers. They are very relaxed. They're not really solving big problems. They enjoy their lives. They you know, enjoy working with people. They are way less scientific, in my opinion. That's what I see. And they are way more about you know, social interactions and, and, and being good programmers. Uh, on the left, it's Donald Knuth, is the author of the book The Art of Computer Programming, which is the fundamental, the Bible of software, of, the, of programming, of algorithms, and, and you definitely have to read it if you want to be on the left side, if you want to be a scientific person. On the right, it's Jeffrey Lebowski, who is the, uh, the actor, it's uh, Jeff Bridges and um, the character of the movie The Big Lebowski. A few words about myself before I give my opinion. I'm also a programmer. I write code. On the left, you see that's, uh, that's my GitHub history of the last year. So I commit a lot. I write a lot of code. I am an author of a few open source Java libraries. I also write in Ruby, sometimes in JavaScript, sometimes in PHP. I am also uh, a writer of books. So I wrote a few books about object-oriented programming. If maybe some of you know them. Who knows, who, who, who at least know about my book? Can you raise a hand? A few people, that's good. So I, I, I'm an author of these books about object-oriented programming. You may be interested to, to check them. And I am a CEO of Xerocracy, which is a, a platform which helps people and programmers manage themselves. So it's a, it's, a, it's a robot which helps programmers to manage software projects and coordinate them in this project. So I manage programmers as well. I'm on both sides. I'm writing code and I know how to uh, manage software projects. Now I'm getting to the point about programmers. I will give you five things now, I'll list five things which I think changed since I was a student. When I was a student, there was one situation on the market of programmers. Now I observe, I see a different situation on the market. So I will list five important things which changed. And, 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 and based on these things, I will give my conclusions and you will see whether they are right or wrong. First one, we are way more expensive than our computers now. It wasn't like that before. For example, 17 years ago, when I was writing my first PHP website, one gigabyte of memory on the server costed 
It was a PHP website, and one gigabyte costed $1,000. Now it's still the same PHP, still the same website, but one gigabyte costs $5. So it's 200 times cheaper for me and easier to write software because computers are cheap. At the same time, if you compare salaries, for example, in Silicon Valley, then a good engineer, software engineer, architect in Silicon Valley was getting about $80,000 a year 17 years ago in 2000. Now they are getting three or four, sometimes five times more. So computers became cheaper. It's now way easier to create software because we have bigger platforms. We have more memory. We have faster CPUs. But at the same time, we are four times more expensive. You see, that's the, the dynamic. So we are getting, because of that, I think, more lazy. So for people 25 years ago, it was so difficult to create the software because computers were small and they were always had to fight with the hardware limitations. Now we're pretty much relaxed and more expensive at the same time. So we're getting more money, doing less job. Second observation is that now we can open source. So, so Many years ago, again, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, it was necessary, every time you wanted to create some software, it was necessary to write a lot of things from scratch. We didn't have GitHub, we didn't have Maven Central, we didn't have uh, any repositories. And by the way, how many Java programmers are here? Can you raise your hand? On, not so many, actually, like 20%. And what are the other languages? Are there any? Okay, JavaScript. <laughs> so NPM, we didn't have NPM at that time. We didn't have any repository management. We didn't have open, well, almost no open source. We had some open source, of course, but it wasn't so easy to get access to open source. Even the internet connections were like, we, we didn't have, I mean, it was difficult. So for us, it was at that time, for programmers at that time, it was necessary to reinvent all the, everything. Many things, not everything, but many things. Reinvent, re-implement, re even basic things, fundamental things. It's not like that anymore. In my observation, we are not writing code right now a lot. We are wiring components together. We're getting open source pieces, we're putting them together, we connect them somehow, we learn how they work, and boom, the product is ready. So now the world of programming is more about reusing and re more about stealing or open sourcing. So taking parts, taking pieces of code from somebody else, putting together and making sure that the, the, the whole thing works. For example, I tried to, I tried to, you know, to, uh, to prove my words and I analyzed the things which I'm using right now. I'm a mostly Java developer. So I listed a few things which I didn't have when I was a student in 1993, 25 years ago. For example, the sorting function. Now in Java I have dot sort, and I can just sort a list. But in, in 1993 I had to implement the sorting. Who of you actually can write binary sorting algorithm? Okay, maybe like 25-30%. And who actually does that? Raise your hand. One. You see? So two, maybe you, you know, some of you know how to do that, but only a few of you actually implement that stuff. While 25 years ago, you, were, you would be doing exactly that all the time, full time in your job, in your job because that were, that were the fundamental pieces of the code. Hash map, who knows why? Okay, first question, do you know what hash map is? <laughs> Somebody said they're bad programmers, so I have to ask these questions, right? Okay, you know what hash map is. Who knows why it's called hash map, what hash means? Yeah, you see, like 10% of people. And again, the same question. Who in your life ever implemented the hash map yourself? One, two. Maybe you were just, you know, playing, right? It was just, an, no, like really for, for the job? Okay, a few people, one, two, per, two, two, two persons actually needed to write that code. If you move back in time, 20 years ago, everybody would just say, of course, how can we work without hash map? Where would we get it? Maybe they would get it from a friend sitting next, next, uh, in the next cubicle, but that's it. If the friend doesn't have it, we need to rewrite it. 
I was writing that. I remember, I remember that. So when Java was introduced, I put the numbers here, so don't blame me if I made some mistakes, but approximately like that. So when Java came to the market, we were so happy to see that functionality. Like, wow, we have a hash map. We don't need to implement it. We just can use it. Lists, uh, maps, and all that stuff. And many other things. For example, regular expression. You cannot imagine life now without regular expressions, right? They're so like fundamental parts. But they appeared only in, for example, in Java in 2002. So before that, we didn't have that. We we're just using something else. We we're parsing our strings using like comparison, comparison, and comparisons, which was way more difficult than now. And of course, we didn't have GitHub. Now we have GitHub and other systems like Bitbucket and everything else. So we were not able to share anything and to get the code from somebody else. Change number three, now we can stay home. It wasn't the case years ago. Thanks to internet, thanks to the tools we have, like conferencing tools, Skype, Zoom, all that possible chats, messaging systems, everything. So we are technically, we can technically stay home and work from home. That's another very important change we see on the market. So the market is not anymore a market of cubicles and offices. It's more a market of people. It's more a market of individuals who can contribute to projects being somewhere, sitting at home, working from home, from cafe, from everywhere. It wasn't the case years ago. Even though I read sometimes articles that big companies like IBM, Yahoo, Bank, Bank of America, they are closing now their initiatives to allow employees to work from home. So IBM decided, okay, enough of that, let's move these people back to offices because they just stay, in, I don't know, because they stay lazy or whatever. I don't know exactly the reasons, but they are deciding, like Yahoo and IBM, they decide to, you know, to, to shut down these initiatives which they had before and don't allow people to work remote. But if you look at the trend on the global market, not just individual companies, you will see that, for example, some statistics. In 2005, in the United States, there were about 2 million people working not in their offices, working remotely, according to some official statistics. In 2017, last year, it was 9 million. So it's four, about five times more people are moving out of the offices and work remotely. This seriously affects the software development market because programmers as well, who of you actually work from home more than from the office? You see? About, yeah, not even 10%, maybe 5%. And that number will grow. Um, I can guarantee that. So the more in time, in 10 years, there will be half of you raising their hands. So we will work, work remote. Even though we may still remain in offices sometimes, we may have some places where you know, the companies are located, but we will not need to be in the office that often because we will have so powerful tools and you will know how to use them. And the managers who don't know how to use will be retired. And the new managers will show up who are young now, and they will show up and they will say, I don't need to have a meeting face to face. I can do a video conference call. We, have, we had a discussion yesterday about that, yeah. And, 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 and there were arguments about that, and somebody was saying that uh, it's not possible to do a meeting, you know, remotely. We need to have everybody in the room. So I understand that now, but in the future, I think, more people will realize that it's... Well, not realize, but they will know how to do it. The computers and, and video conferencing tools will be so powerful, and we will so get used to them that we will... Uh, do remote. Like now, people are not actually making phone calls anymore. They're texting way more. So phone calls are in the past. Texting now is the future. The same will be for the meetings. I think so. That's change number three. Change number four, we have IDEs. We didn't have that before. We didn't have that before. We had VIs, Emacs. You can call them IDEs, but really they were like plain text editors. Now we have so powerful Instruments. Who's using this stuff? IntelliJ. There you go, finally. Okay, so there are some good programmers. Uh, <laughs> no, it's for Java. It's IntelliJ. It's a really powerful IDE for Java, which actually is quickly re removing everybody else from the market. And it's so powerful that sometimes it writes code for me. So all I need to do is just start a word. 
it immediately, re immediately completes, auto-completes the text for me. It helps me find information, helps me browse through, the browse through the code. It helps me do a lot of stuff which I wasn't doing before. So I'm way lazy now comparing to how I was before. I remember myself writing in VI. That was like a really war zone, you know? So you really had to fight with your code and with your computer. You need to remember a huge long list of shortcuts. You need to remember you know, all the keywords, all the function names, all the methods names, everything you need to remember. Now it's way easier. Autocomplete, you just click the button and the code goes for you. What makes us, in this case, lazier? We are, as programmers, are lazier and way more paid, well better paid. Uh, we can leave questions or there's some mistake here. Okay, we'll I'll have some time in the end. Um, so computers are becoming way more powerful, that's my point. They are helping us, and we're getting lazy. And final point, number five, which makes us super lazy, we have Agile. Uh, who, <laughs> who likes the trend of Agile? Who like, feels that this is, this is a positive trend? Okay. About 10%, maybe more, 20%, more. Okay, you, you, you need to have to raise your hand or are you just raising it to other with your bosses here? <laughs> okay, uh, who doesn't like it? Who feels like this is something really wrong in the industry, the agile movement? Okay, one, two, a few. Um, so basically what I feel, again, it's my opinion, is that waterfall, even being criticized and all and that, is removed from the market now, together with discipline, together with order, together with rules, together with anything which, which actually helps us stay organized. Instead, we have some mantras which sound like that. I took them from books and articles. First one, we accept that talented people who are internally motivated, blah, 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 who understand the product vision will do the best they can do. So just be talented, and the magic will happen. That's what Agile is basically telling us. And I want to ask you, are there any non-talented people in this room who will not fit in the description? One person is non-talented. So I, oh, okay, you're trolling me, right? So if nobody would think that way. We all think that we're so super talented. So why software doesn't work? Why we have bugs? Why we have missed deadlines? Why it doesn't actually happen like the mantra says? Because the mantra doesn't make any sense. The mantra basically gives us freedom to be free, to be relaxed, to be talented, and don't do anything. I, th I feel it that way. So re Agile is relaxing us, is giving us freedom, which doesn't really help projects. It does help us a lot as programmers, of course, but it doesn't help projects. Another one, I have three. If the people on the project are good enough, that they can use almost any process and accomplish their assignments. If they're not good enough, no process will happen. Are there not good enough people in this room? Again, nobody. So, again, it's kind of weird. I mean, it sounds weird to, to me, this mantra. So who the author is speaking about, is talking about? Who are these non-good non enough people? I don't know. Everybody is good enough. So they're just saying, they're just basically giving control to people and saying, do whatever you like, do whatever you want, just be good enough, and you're all good enough, and then we'll just wait the result from you. That's what we have now. Is it good or bad? We'll discuss a bit later, but that's what I observe in the market. And number three from Agile. A well-functioning team of great individuals with mediocre tools will always outperform this functional team of mediocre individuals with great tools. Again, my question, are there any mediocre individuals here? They're mostly great, right? Or oh, we don't have great as well. <laughs> so, as well, the same ideas. And all books are saying the same. If you read the Agile books, you start, they all start with something like that. They all start with this definition, like great individuals, they will do everything. So basically we have the modern programmer now. The modern programmer, I'm sorry for the male picture, I, I didn't know that there are so many good, you know, women in this room, usually there are guys. Um, <laughs> but that's, that's, how, that's how the modern programmer looks like. Uh, he's, I will say, say, I will say he, but it's, it's the same, she, the same. He's social, he likes me to be in the, in the room, he likes to be at conferences, he likes to be social. He's very talented. We don't know what it means, but he's very talented. 
He's free. He's free to go. He's free to do whatever he wants. The market needs more people now that the market can supply. So we, in all countries, we have a very high need for, for talented programmers, and we don't have enough of them. So programmers now are free to go anywhere they want. They can change companies. They are free to, you know, to be freelancers, not freelancers. The freedom is, we have a lot of freedom. Very loved. He knows that everybody loves him. Either the code is good or the code is bad. I'm very talented. They will love me. He's very adequate. I don't know what it means, to be honest, but he's very adequate. He's motivated, of course. He's very internally motivated individual. Again, it's difficult to define what it is. He's internally motivated to contribute to the project. You will never know what it means, but... And he's great. And, of course, he's relaxed. So relaxed is the main word, the main situation we have now. We are so much relaxed now. Um, so my point, I'm getting to my point, is that if you look at the timeline, then 25 years, we needed programmers who were smart. They were smart. We needed mathematics. We needed computer science. We needed engineering skills. Now we need just to be great, because it's so easier now to develop something. You don't need to be really a mathematician. You cannot implement the hash map in the wrong way, because the hash map is already implemented. You don't need to fight for your job, because there's another job next office to you, where the great programmers are appreciated. We are way more relaxed, we just be great, and we are losing mathematician skills. We're losing our technical skills, that's my point. And it's good. I mean, I'm not saying it's good. It's, it's the reality. We don't need them anymore as much as we needed them before. We don't need to be mathematics now. We don't need to be like engineers, engineers. We need to be something else, but we are not there yet. So we are just great. We're like somewhere in the middle. We're lost in time. They, re they removed from us, not they, but reality, removed from us the necessity to be technically skilled. But they didn't, give it, give it, they didn't give us the requirements for new skills. And I think that the new skills are, <laughs> we need the future programmer who is effective. That's what I would say. And I put the picture of this guy. You know this guy, right? Or you don't? Who doesn't know who is this guy? OK. This, <laughs> this is Linus Torvalds. He's the creator of Linux, uh, Linux operating system. And uh, he, I think, is, uh, well, he's not really a ro I mean, let's not, like, make idols here, but he's, I think, could be, uh, could make, hel could help us understand what an effective programmer look like. An effective programmer, in my understanding, is less about technical skills from the past and more about social technical skills, so-called social tech, or the skills for the interaction between people and code. So the programmers of the future will know things which I will try to list you now, and then we'll finish. So we need to learn how to work with people through code. Because now we have more people around us, we have uh, faster computers, we have easier to write code, we have a lot to share, we can share code, we don't need to, you know, to be really technicians, like I said, but we have more people around us. The amount of programmers is growing, the amount of open source is growing every day, so the mess around us is growing constantly, and we need to find out how we can survive in that territory, and what skills do we need. I think that we need skills for managing people on top of code, not the code by itself. So we need to know how to be effective at the territory of many, many programmers who are writing some code. So the code is secondary now. Interaction with people is first, is primary. Just being good, great, talented is not enough. You may feel like it's enough, but it's not, it's not going to be enough in the nearest future. It's not enough already. So I call them social technical skills. Social, te not me, it's just, I got it from, from, from books, it's not me saying that. Social technicals, it's a combination of code writing and talking to people. So let's look at this simple comparison uh, list. On the left side, I listed things which were important 
years ago. On the right side, I listed things which I think programmers need to learn now how to use. If in the past it was important to write good algorithms, to know different languages and how to operate with them, to make sure your code is high performance so it works fast because computers were slow, to know mathematics and to know logic, then now here's five things. I tried to make the list of five, even though I can put more in there, but let's focus on these five. Number one, pull requests. You know what pull requests are, right? So this is the way you contribute to somebody else's code. So they have the code, you want to give them some changes, you want to modify the code. You submit the pull request. In my experience, people don't know exactly how to do that. They can write code somehow, even though they write it in a bad way now because they're not good programmers anymore, not, good in, not, good sci not scientific, not, not smart as they were before, and they cannot commit and they cannot submit the pull request in the right way. Who can name a few things? Let's do three things. What would you recommend somebody who is submitting a pull request to do in order to make sure the pull request is actually accepted? So how to make your pull request how to give your pull request more chances for accept acceptance? Proper description. Small, exactly. And don't forget about tests. Okay, that's a good, pretty good list. These are the things which you need to know way more and practice way more than the code by itself. Number two, Git. Who can tell me Git? You know what Git is, right? It's a standard de facto on the market. For the for the for the source for the source code management uh, distributed source code source code management, who knows the difference between Git merge and Git rebase? There you go, like 20 percent, maybe even less, 15. Everybody has to know that. This is way more important than to write the, the good code. You need to know how to put that code to the repository. You need to know how to merge your stuff into repository. If you don't know that, your technical skills, nobody will need that. Because we are working now with people, with more people, and that, that quality is way more important. So study Git, don't study math. That's my, you know, that's my suggestion. Maybe it's a little bit too much, too harsh, but I'm exaggerating, of course, on purpose. Number three, Agile. Okay, we criticize Agile, but everybody uses Agile right now, right? So we, we work in Agile teams, so you need to know what Agile. Who can name me two principles out of 12 principles of Agile? Give me one. Relationship over processes. Relationship over processes, yes. Working code over documentation. Working code over documentation. These guys are well prepared. But you see, <laughs> so we, uh, we need to know that. This is our Bible of programming now. Not the art of computer programming, but by Donald Knuth, which was published in uh, 1968, 1973, 30 years ago. That was a good piece of, of, of knowledge at that time. Now a good piece of knowledge is this stupid 12 principles. No matter how stupid they are, but we need to know them. This is the Bible now, and you need to learn them if you want to be a good programmer. DevOps. You know what DevOps is, right? Obviously. And who knows the difference between continuous integration and continuous <laughs> delivery? <laughs> and continuous delivery. One, two. I mean, you know you're prepared. <laughs> all of you, all of you have to know that. All of you have to know that. Continuous integration, continuous delivery, um, green-blue deployment. Who knows what green-blue deployment is? Again, more, 20%. That's good. I'm happy to see that. So this is the knowledge you need to obtain, which is more important than your coding skills. And testing. Time to go. Okay. And testing. Um, let's skip the testing. I'll show you... <laughs> I'll show you now, I'll show you three. <laughs> well, I wanted to ask. I'll show you three polls, which I made a few weeks ago on Twitter. I wanted, I was preparing for this conference, and I wanted to know how much people actually know about this uh, social technical skills, how much they understand the social dynamics. You will most likely disagree with what I will show you, but I'll show you anyway. So this was the poll. Uh, imagine you have a fix to fix a bug, but you can't understand how the code works, what do you do? So you need to fix it, but the code is not clear for you, so what do you do? The majority of people, as you see, answer it, ask the author. So find the author and ask what's going on. This is the habit from the past. This is the habit of people who are lost in time. They're not 
technical anymore because technical people would refactor the code. They would just work with the code, second answer. But they are like, they know that they need social skills. They know that in relationship over, over what? Over processes, yeah. So the relationship matters most. So they just find the right person and ask the, what's going on with the code. That's a wrong, that's a wrong habit. And this is not how modern social dynamics have to work in software team. I think that the right answer is this one, which so few people actually gave. So file a bug. If you find the code which doesn't work, you don't find the author, because the author may be on another piece of the, on another part, on another part of the planet. The author will be gone already. You don't know who's the author. You should not care about that. You should file a bug into the bug tracking system and request help from the project and say, I don't understand that piece of code. Explain it for me. Refactor it for me. And then you move on. That's how we need to work. And that's not how people work now. This is like, you know, 200, 400 people answered my, my poll. And only 10% actually understand what's going on. I want to ask you to think about that and be in that part. So think that you are working now with bigger territory and, and, and understand that people are everywhere and blah, blah, blah. Poll number two. A fellow programmer asks you to explain how the class which you created some time ago works. What do you do? Somebody comes to you in the office and say, hey, you wrote that class. What do you do? Can you explain what's going on? So there are four options. What you know the answer, like the, the majority of people said, explain. Of course. There's a friend coming to me. Relationship is more important, right? Like Edge, I'm not, I know you're not the author of this principle, but uh, relationship over processes. So relationship with this guy who is coming to me now is way more important for me than anybody, anything else. So I'll just help. I'll just explain right now. That's what the majority of uh, people are saying. How do you think what is the right answer? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's actually a good answer also. Yeah, the, 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 the answer number four, like how did you find me? I mean, come on, I wrote this code some time ago. Why are you talking to me now? I, I put the code in the repository. Leave me alone. I'm doing something else. I'm not, I'm not responsible, huh? They know how to use Git. Yeah, they know how to, yeah, that's right. So, uh, so the, 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 the answer number four, actually, even if it's a joke, it's a good answer. Because I'm not, I don't want to be responsible for everything I wrote before. I move on, I move, I'm doing something else. But still, what do you think, what do you think I think is the right answer? Uh, no, not documented. No, no documented. <laughs> So the documented, also a good answer, but the right answer is this one. So file a, uh, ask to file a bug. You come to me and say the class is, you don't understand how it works. Make a bug and I will work on that bug. And I will work on that and make the code better. So I don't jump in and start documenting it right now because I may have something else to do. I may be busy in another project. So it's not for me right now to decide the priorities. It's good that you're asking the question, but I want that question to go through the file, through the bug tracking system. Again, it's the understanding of the correct processes, which are very important. I think way more important than relationship, even though Agile thinks the opposite way. And the last one, and we finish. Let's say you have, you're in a new project and you have a question about Python, but you're a Java programmer. So they gave you the, the Python code to fix, but you're a Java programmer, so what do you do? There's no such option. Ah. Nicola, wait it. <laughs> so what do you do? You see the majority of people are saying Google, 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 right? I think you would do the same. What else? You just Google and Google. Stack Overflow is a better answer, yes. You, instead of Googling, you go to Stack Overflow and say, hey, guys, can you teach me Python, please? <laughs> and they may teach you Python. They will teach you Python. And sometime you will catch up and you will become a good Python developer, maybe in a few months, maybe in a year. But what do you think? Keeping in mind that the market is huge, the market needs more people, and we can easily find more jobs, and we, can, we need to work with the market now, not with cubicles and closed projects. So we, are, we need to be more social than technical. So keeping all this in mind, what do you think would be the right answer here? What, yeah. Huh? Outsource it. Outsource it. The whole thing, yeah? <laughs> That, that may be not a bad answer, actually. Yeah, just keep, take the entire library and put it on, online and every, somebody will help you. But I think the right answer here, even though you may be surprised, 
is an um, email recruiter. I mean, it's, it sounds like a joke, but it, it has a sense in it. So it means that something is wrong with the current setup of the project. So you're in the wrong project, you're in the wrong position. Instead of hiding this information, instead of pretending that everything is cool, let me just give me some time, I'll learn that, that Python, which I don't like. Not, not me, but in the, in the situation. So instead of doing that, you should just say, hey, there's something wrong. Let, give, your in, the, give that information to your manager and let the manager decide maybe there has to be some rotation of people. So don't be afraid and sit in a closed project just you know, protecting your territory. Be more open and ready to, uh, ready to play with the market more actively. Um, maybe I confused you, oops. Maybe I confused you a little bit of all that. So what do you think? Uh, maybe you have some time for questions, but I doubt it. We will have more detailed discussion of everything I said here at 3.30 in the architecture track. So you can come back and I will have a talk there as well. But it will be a little bit more detailed and I will go into this social dynamics as, as I see them. And I will explain you more what I think is the right way to be a programmer of the future. Thank you very much. <laughs>